Yo, what's up, my current VGP box? Welcome back to another video with your boy Maddox, aka Man of Culture. Nope, this time I'm not gonna analyze videos, I'm gonna explain to you the pace judging system. I'm going to show you the different categories, why we need it and how to use it. Me, Collapse and Chung Bao will use this judging system at the next Beatbox Throwdown, so that's why I'm going to explain to you on Beatbox International, because that's why it's gonna happen. <laughs> So let's start easy with why is the system actually called pace system? Well, there's four different categories, which are performance, arrangement, complexity and execution. So that's why P-A-C-E. Got it? Easy, right? So let's get deeper into the different categories. First category is performance. Performance means your stage presence, your choreography on stage, everything that you do on stage next to beatboxing to entertain the crowd, to entertain the judges, etc. So it's about how do you move on stage, how do you control the crowd with physical movements, how do you interact physically with your opponent, all these things. This category kind of only works for live battles, that's why we're not going to use it at the beatbox throwdown, because it's an online event. You could use it if it's with video, or if you use a different interpretation of performance, which we had at the beatbox COVID battle in Germany. But for this battle we decided to to only use three categories. So let's move on to the next one. Category number two is arrangement. And this simply means structure, composition, transitions and dynamics. So in this category, the judge is looking at how does the beatboxer structure his beats? How well are his transitions in between beats? How dynamic are his rounds? Is he switching between slow and emotional parts and heavy, loud, fast parts? Or is he always sticking to one thing? So let's say the beatboxer starts with a melody at the beginning, no percussions, maybe there's some lyrical part inside, and then he went into a drop that is heavy with some technical parts, some fast things, and then he goes into a second drop that is maybe more focused on the melody again, but then has drums inside. That's a really dynamic one. A really undynamic performance would be if the beatbox is just sticking to heavy beats from the beginning till the end, and there is no time to rest for the crowd, there's no way to connect to the artist because he doesn't use any lyrics, he doesn't take his time to catch the attention. All these kind of things play a role in arrangement. One special thing about arrangement also is that the judge will ask how spontaneous is the beatboxer. So let's say the opponent just finished his round and he did certain sounds on his round. If the beatbox is able to use his sounds and integrate it into his arrangement without struggling in structure for the spontaneity, he of course will get plus points. So the rebuttal capability plays a big role also in arrangement. Let's move on to the third category, complexity. In this category, the judge is rating the difficulty of the beats of the beatboxer. So he's rating how original are his sounds, how difficult are the technical patterns, how difficult are the melodic patterns, how difficult are the lyrical parts, and how difficult is it to create certain sounds or certain combos. And I think especially this category is really special because we didn't really see this in other judging systems. Normally you would treat musicality and technicality differently. In this category we don't really care about how technical or how musical the beatboxer is. We look at how hard it is to do certain things. So let's say you have Alem versus Gene. Alem is really technical, he's really advanced and it's really hard to do his technical beats. On the other hand, we have Gene with crazy arpeggios. He's combining advanced sounds with advanced melodies. So this is also really difficult to do. If you judge technicality and musicality separated from each other, you can't really rate these two beatboxers. But looking at complexity, you can. Of course, if a beatbox is capable of doing a lot of complex things, like complex melodies, complex beat patterns, complex sounds, he will get more points than a beatboxer who is just sticking to technicality or musicality. A good example for this is D'Lo. He's mixing crazy melodies with advanced sounds and fast technical patterns. What also plays a role here is, if you answer to opponent, are you able to keep up with the complexity of your opponent? Are your technical patterns as complex or your sounds or not? Alright, so the fourth and last category is execution. In this category, the judge is rating the quality of the beatboxing. So he's looking at timing, cleanness, power and energy. 
Looking at this category, let's compare Beard and Codfish, for example. Beard is someone with a really high complexity, but sometimes he's lacking in execution because it's just simply so hard to do what he does. On the other hand, we have Codfish, who doesn't really use high complexity all the time, but he takes care of his execution a lot. His sounds are super clean, his melodies most of the times are in pitch, his timing is amazing and his delivery and energy is really on point. So as you can see, execution and complexity kind of plays together. The higher your complexity is, the harder it is to keep a high execution and vice versa. So let's talk about how to use this system. One special thing about this judging system is that each judge has his own category. So at the beatbox throwdown, I will take care of the arrangement, Chungbao will take care of complexity and Collapse will judge execution. Because he's pretty good with basics, right? He knows how to be clean. <laughs> Another special thing about this system is that the judges can give up to three points. So it's not like in a regular battle where the judge points to left or right, but he gives points to each opponent. So that means if you use all four categories, you can get up to 12 points. And in this case, at the beatbox throwdown, where we use only three categories, you can get up to nine points. So each judge has to decide to give either one, two or three points. There's no zero points per judge. You now may ask, why is it not just one point? The simple answer is, if one beatbox is really outstanding in one category, then he should get more points in this category. Of course, this also means that each judge has more power because he can give one point to beatboxer A and three points to beatboxer B. But because each judge also has only one category to take care of, he's way more accountable. All right, so I hope I could make it clear for you how the system works. Now let's go over a few questions that Beatbox International collected for me. Question number one is, why does a judge only judge one category? Well, from my personal experience and also the experience from ZD, which is one of the most prestigious beatbox judges on the planet, I know that as a judge, if you need to judge a live battle, it's impossible to take care of four categories. At other judging systems, it can be even more, like up to seven categories in the kickback beatbox battle. Of course, it's a different case if the judges can watch the videos multiple times, but if they need to make a decision just after watching the battle, one once, it's just impossible to judge each category precisely. All right, let's move on to the next question. What happens if the participants have the same points? Well, this case can also happen at other judging systems. And then, of course, there will be an extra round. If the extra round happens, each judge can only give one additional point. So in our case, with three judges, there can't be a second extra round anymore. Next question. In a high level event, do you think it's likely that three points are too low? So the question now, of course, is why did I take three points and not 10 or five or two? Well, I think that if you can give up to 10 points, it will get pretty random. There's not a big difference between 10 and nine points then. And it's going to be pretty hard to spontaneously decide for the judge. But with three points, you can be like, okay, he was average, so two points. He killed it in this category, he gets three points, or he was pretty weak, so he only gets one point. And of course, you always need to compare one beatboxer to the other. If you have a beatbox battle with two really weak beatboxers, you can't just only give one point to each one, but you need to compare them and then see, okay, this one was way better, so he gets three points, the other one just gets one. They're both really close and I can't make a decision, so both get the same points. Or they're really close, but I still make a decision that one is better, so then you give three to two or two to one. All right, so next questions. Which category does counters, rebuttals fit in? Well, I was already explaining it. In arrangement, you can judge how spontaneous one beatboxer is and that means can he do a rebuttal without destroying his performance the dynamics the structure the transitions in complexity when you look at rebuttals you judge can he keep the same complexity than his opponent and in execution if you look at the rebuttal you check if he can keep the same quality in his rebuttal so rebuttals and counters actually play a role in all three categories not so much in performance, but we're not going to use it anyways in Beatbox Throwdown. All right, next question. What happened to technicality in musicality? 
Well, simple answer, technicality and musicality is now split into complexity and execution. You can do really simple melodies, you can do really advanced melodies with crazy arpeggios and crazy sounds. And the same goes for technicality. You can do easy patterns and you can do really complex patterns. And that's how we judge it. We look at how complex it is. And the last question of Beatbox International, will each judge explain their decision after every vote? Well. That's up to you, Beatbox International. <laughs> Me personally, I would prefer to do that because it's really interesting for the audience to see and understand why one beatboxer won. And of course, also for the beatboxer, it's great to get feedback. Because each judge only has one category, it's also way easier to justify his decision. He can really focus on his category and keep it short then. Wow, that was a lot of explanation. I hope you understand it better now. But of course, learning by doing you will get to see how we use the pace system at the beatbox throwdown or ace system in this case. And in my experience, both the beatboxers and the audience can get really quickly into it. We were actually testing the system at the beat COVID battle at Beatbox Germany, which you can check out on the YouTube channel. And it went pretty smooth and we got a lot of great feedback. So I'm really excited to use it at the beatbox throwdown at Beatbox International and see you there guys. All right guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If yes, hit the like button, subscribe to this channel and subscribe to my channel, of course, too. And I see you soon. Beatbox International presents the International Throwdown 2021. International. Book your dates because whether or not you're a pro or new beatboxer, you stand a chance to win some awesome prizes. On the 10th of July at 2 p.m. UTC, this is going to be one of the biggest events of the year. The insane prize pool this year is worth almost 5,000 US dollars. We have prizes from Dobler Studio microphones to Wuja vests and straps, to Just Breathe lifestyle face masks, to huge cash prizes, and even an SM7B for someone super lucky. You can win some of these prizes not only through our giveaway, but also through the People's Choice Award, where you, the viewer, will decide on who had the best wildcard. You guys completely decide who will get that prize. Speaking of which, wildcard submissions open from the 19th of May to the 7th of June. So you better get planning right now. Massive thanks to our sponsors, Boclea, Wuja and Beatfox for helping make this event possible. And this year, the International Throwdown will be using a brand new judging system. So if you want to find out more about that and keep up to date with other event announcements, make sure to follow us on Instagram at BBXINT. International.